श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ सो देन आई स्टार्ट टू स्टडी योग एंड वेदांत बिकॉज आई वॉज लुकिंग टू दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इन माई लाइफ ऑफ नॉट फाइनिंग द वे टू हैपीनेस आई डिट नो हाउ टू वर्क हाउ टू अर्न मनी आई डिट नो वॉट टू से टू पीपल टू बी कैरिजमेटिक आई वुड नो आउ दिस थिंग्स but not how to be happy this was very difficult and at the same time it, i did not have the conviction that people were doing the right thing to be happy and selling the right ideas to me so i was like oh my god it seems that the world is completely going the wrong direction you know then suddenly this guy came and told me that happiness was not about a external change but a inner change and when we tell our inner change it does not mean inside the body okay inner change is just a figure figure of speech inner change means a cognitive change a change in the way we look to things so i immediately say oh wonderful in the way we look to things is what makes us happy so for example If you tell the glasses half empty you are going to be unhappy but say half full it's going to be no this is this is not a cognitive change this is what we call as positive thinking is something completely different positive thinking means that i'm going to try to look to different angles for the same thing and a different angle to the same thing would make me happy because nothing is completely uh bad and or completely good but this is not what is called a cognitive change a cognitive change in vedanta terms is an understanding that changes completely the way you see a certain situation i will tell you an example my grandmother was trying to uh disconnect the the net service now there is this net service for different channels in brazil and she was trying to disconnect the net service and she would call the the place and tell oh please i need to disconnect my my service is not working and the woman would say oh it's not working one minute i'm going to send you to the uh support and then the the technician would try to talk to her and they say that's not what i'm interested in. that woman is crazy i ask her i want to cancel i don't want any more this this that the okay. the guy said okay just be calm i'm going to pass you back and then you go to the correct place okay and then pass back what please tell slowly what do you need oh i need to cancel my uh, channel my, my tv subscription because it's not really working this thing is not does not have a good condition a good quality and all this oh i send you to the quality service and send you to the quality service and she was about to get mad you know and then she came to me and told jonas i i, I don't this woman she's completely stupid is an idiot you know i cannot any more talk to her it's impossible please talk to this woman and tell her that i want to cancel this and i don't know who has to cancel but this person has to answer the phone and then i took the phone and then i the, the woman would say uh hello tell us lowly the what do you need when she talked and the, the the pause that it has between the words it was very clearly that it was like a machine you know but my grandmother she could not really understand that so she would have all the sort of emotions that she would have to another human being towards a machine imagine this this is crazy <laughs> how you can look to a person you know look to a book and become angry with the book i'm very angry because what happen if you see the book as a person you can do that this means that in relate to the uh, electronic machine she was 
having a cognitive mistake, a cognitive error. And for that, so for that, the only solution is a cognitive change. This is a cognitive change, a knowledge. Some knowledge has to come. So I gave the knowledge. I was the guru for her. And I told her, dear grandmother, it's a machine. Ah! That not <laughs> is all the emotions blue. <laughs> what now she can do? Say that she's angry with the machine. The machine is stupid. The machine is just a machine. Then she's going to be stupid with herself. So she just, ah! and then she, she laughed at herself and laughed at everything that was happening. Actually, a cognitive change does not make any change outside. This is just a change in the way you see the same facts, but now with a different knowledge behind. And this different knowledge changes everything. And he was telling me, happiness is not about acquiring new things, a search of comfort. No. It's about having a cognitive change about yourself. But when we say self, the mind is so used to think about the body and the mind that it cannot really understand this statement. You have to have a cognitive change about yourself. I know myself. I am this much high. I have uh, so many children. I live in this place. I know, or I know myself. I'm very anxious, I'm very... No, no. All these things, they are not yourself. All these things are objects. That's why you know them, actually. Your body, your emotions, your thoughts, your mind. For you to be able to see or experience an object, the first thing is that this object has to be separate from you. It has to be an object, different from the subject. Then you can have an experience. Actually, everything we know is different than us. So, when we say I, this I is always mistaken. If you don't have the knowledge, 100% sure it will be mistaken. It's some sort of object that is taken to be myself. And think about this. Just like the electronic machine of my grandmother, She's taking something that is not real for her, superimpose it, place it in the same place that some other thing is there. She's looking to the electronic machine in her mind, thinking that that is a person. At the same time, at the same way that a person could see a mirror in, in the, on, on the sand, on a hot day, you can just see water. You are placing an image, an idea, over something. And this idea is not real, it's not there. When we say I, and if the I is not the body and, or the mind, what we are doing? We are placing a different idea over something that is not actually what is the subject I. So, what happened is that due to this mistake, we take ourselves to be the body and the mind. And then, everything that happens in the world, they are just what they say uh, in Portuguese, uh, they are affirming, reaffirming the first conclusion that we get, the first concept that we get. So, for example, I think I am this body, and this body, I think it's not beautiful, and I want to be beautiful, and, for the, and this makes a distress inside of me, and then I, I, I have an objective, I have a plan, I'm going to the, to, the, to the gym, I'm going to eat less or eat more, whatever. I'm going to do this treatment, that and this, all based in the fact that I want this body to be beautiful. And, but actually, what hurts me 
is not that the body is beautiful or the body is not beautiful. It's that I am not beautiful. My eye is connected to this body. Because I'm not really interested in the body of my friend. If the, the body is beautiful or not beautiful, it's her problem. My problem is my body. My problem is my children. My problem is my house, my work. When, where, wherever the eye is there placed, there will be a problem. And the, thing, the facts in life, the, the, the things and the facts, they, they are just the way they are. The job is the way it is. The boss is the way it is. My body is the way it is. Where the problem really hide is not on the objects themselves. But something about the way I look to these objects make them a problem for me. And this something is the connection that I make between the objects and myself. If I think really that this is my body, then I have one million reasons to be unhappy. The age is coming. Age is coming means diseases are coming. Pain are coming. All sort of trouble definitely will help to this to happen to this body. They even in in, uh, in the Ayurvedic in the Ayurvedic uh, understanding of physiology, you know, you could determine every disease that a person has through the birth chart. I went now to an Ayurvedic hospital in India, and I was there, and the guy said, "Oh, you are having a problem on your back. Why?" Because you are in Rahu Kala, the time of Rahu, in your chart. And the Rahu is connected to the back, lower back. Yeah, you're having a problem. I am definitely. And then I told, yes, how do you know? Then he showed me everything. It's there, actually. They say that the final disease that the body would suffer and then die, is, is, it's already decided the moment you are born. By your birth chart, you can say a good astrologer is there. This body, it starts working and everything that will happen until the day we die is that he's going to progressively stop working and become ugly. Nothing else. How am I going to be happy with this body? Impossible. You can do all the lifts. You know, in Brazil they do something in the lips. To be, the lips become big. I don't think it's beautiful, but anyway, they, they make the bigs become very big, you know? And then they put some things on the, on the forehead so that the head does not do like this. No wrinkles, you know? Okay. They are just trying to make the Titanic, you know, Titanic, that big boat, not sink. <laughs> it's impossible. T Titanic is sinking. Don't try to take the water out. That's not going to happen. If the idea of trying to make the body perfect and beautiful so that I become happy because I'm going to be beautiful and perfect, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's just unreasonable. You know. The answer cannot be there. If the Titanic is going down, you have to get a lifeboat, uh, safe, how you say, a safe uh, jacket and everything that's necessary to go to the water, because there is nothing else that you can do. If you want to live forever, if the idea that I want to be happy and live forever and not be affected to any disease is there, then definitely being in this body is a problem, and always going to be a problem. If I want to be also a perfect person, you know, a person that everybody loves, who, who does not want? That's the desire that everybody carries on the heart. I would go to every place and everybody loves me. Nobody hates me. Nobody uh, is unfriend to me. No. Impossible. The mind is so stupid that we just lose good opportunities. The life is just about losing good opportunities because we are just so traumatized about life that we cannot be like happy with ourselves. We cannot talk to other people without hurting them. So difficult. No. And you see, this is something very important. And that's why I'm telling this in the beginning of the classes, you know. Like, Vedanta is not about changing the mind. 
building a new mind, a perfect mind without these emotions upcoming. No, it's not about that. If there, there are some changes that happen, they will happen naturally. But that's not the objective. Actually, the mind will always be imperfect. This is the mantra. The mind is imperfect. Thanks God, I'm not my mind. The mind is imperfect. Thanks God, I'm not my mind. Pudja Swamiji used to tell us, one day somebody asked him in a, in a class, uh, Swamiji, when should I stop doing japa? And then he answered, the day that you don't want anymore your mind to be perfect, then you can stop. Very interesting, you know. Very interesting. The, it's very profound. Talks about not only our desire to make the mind perfect, but talks out about something more inner, you know, that the perfection does not re ab abide in the mind itself. And the Japa exercise gives us this possibility of going further down, you know. If we look, I think that beside Vedanta, what Vedanta has as different from the other spiritual paths that we see around, is that the proposition is not to transform you, is not to make you a better person just like that, you know, just and then you are going to be the person you would like to be, no? The idea is you are unhappy and trying to be a better person because you are taking yourself to be something different than what you really are. It's not about changing yourself. It's about discovering what you really are. This is a cognitive change. No, this is just blah, blah, blah. This is not real. Why we are, everybody has to grow, everybody has to become better, everybody has to, to move forward. This is not correct. Not correct. Then, when I'm talking about the, my grandmother and I, I, I did the bar, then she has the cognitive change and suddenly she, she was happy and laughing at herself. Everybody was laughing. When we tell a good joke or a good story and everybody laughs, everybody laughs. From where this laugh comes? From where joy comes when, when we are joyful? From where joy comes? Joy does not come from outside. It's not that something happened and, that, and then we became happy because now I'm beautiful, definitely. Now I'm successful. No. Happiness just comes in life in the small moments. We give up the capitalism mentality. We give up the idea of changing. We give up the idea of becoming. And some things have this power in life, a good music, the smile of our children, a good joke. Just give the opportunity for us to give this, all these ideas are, that we have about ourselves. In, in our nature, when we are relaxed, when we are naked in the toilet, preparing to take a bath, you know, just the way we are, we sing. Everybody sings. Isn't it true? Everybody sings. I don't know anybody that does not sing when take, is taking a bath. At least some small thing he would say and listen to his own voice. Because there we don't have to make a face to anybody, to pretend anything. There is no success uh, program, project, anything, just to be yourself. And if that is possible, happiness is not about a change. Happiness is about an understanding that it has to happen about myself. And he took almost one year to explain this to me perfectly, like, and convince me that this was right, because my mind was very rest, restless, you know. I was, remember, in the army, working in the stock market, all these things, and I, I, my attention, uh, what's the name for that? My attention span was very short, you know, so I, I could not stay for a long time listening and understanding. I could not. I was very young, but he was very patient and he was answering all the questions and showing me. And after some time, 
I could understand what is the value of knowledge. Knowledge is a key for a cognitive change. Understanding about what I am is the key to unlock happiness in myself. If it's not something that comes from outside, then the only thing that is, is left over is an understanding. If it's not coming from outside, it's just the way it is. So the only thing that I can do really is to change the way I think about myself and I understand myself. And, if it, and it's not about positive thinking, that's very important. It's not about seeing a different angle. There is no different angle when you listen to a joke. I, now I saw a different angle of my own life and I'm not more mad with my husband. No, it's not like this. When I think about, when I, I listen to a good joke, the world just disappears. I'm just myself. It's not about seeing from a different perspective, you know. All this is from spiritual angle, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. It can help. If the person is a big depression, it can look, the person can look what was the things that he conquered in life and how much lucky he is with his family and all this, and then he can come up. But Vedanta is not for this purpose. Vedanta is to fulfill that need that we carry on the heart, to understand what is the purpose of life, what I'm doing here. And I had everything. I had a good family, I had a good job, I had a good girlfriend, I, ha I, I, I was there in the world working, and that never, nothing was really making sense anymore. Just thinking about, not with Vedanta, just thinking about what the world is, the world was not making sense. And then Vedanta, when it came, it was like perfect. It starts to give answers and at the same time to help me how to deal with this restless mind. And this took very long years. Almost 10 years later, I was now studying, let's say, not more twice a week, but every day I would study something and listen to a class, uh, to a recording, read a book. Uh, be, attending different classes, different teachers also. And I saw that uh, Vedanta became the way I was thinking. And it helped me a lot and it helped me also, help also other people that were connected to me, like some friends that would listen and I, whatever I have to share. And then I, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to spend like one year, just preparing myself to do like a course like my teacher has done, or to study even in, in Brazil, but like to finish the study. I wanted to finish. So I, I spent almost one year studying Sanskrit. By that time, imagine, 10 years later, the army was already over. And what I have done was I started a company like a business company on uh, consultancy and it went really well. The day that I decided to stay one year out, my God, people got crazy. Not crazy because crazy with me, anger, no, crazy like how this person is leaving everything. Why he is doing, why he is this, why? And that time I already knew Pudju Swamiji and all this and uh, he even told me, you know, Spend some two, three years earning a lot of money so that you can spend some more five, ten years just studying. And I did everything that he told. I, I earned the money, I, I put all my savings in the bank. I, stra I also straightened my relation with my family. Because this is also an important part of the process, you know. We, we have to make peace at home to start the process so that our mind is not split. So I took all these precautions and then one year I spent just studying Sanskrit basically and uh, listened to a lot of Vedanta class. After, after this one year it was over, Pujo Swamiji announced that the three-year course would start. And then I went to him, asked if I could join and he said, yes, why not? You come in March. 
and so I decided to join this three-year course that actually in our case it was a four-year course because Pujo Somji was already ill by that time, old and he would have to travel a lot and had some health problems in the middle so we had like some gap of some months and then he he did a little bit of an extension and we studied for four years you know? and uh, I was there four years in the ashram in Coimbatore, in the south it was a very profound and heart changing experience that actually I'm going to tell you on the next class. So we stop here and then tomorrow I come back to tell about what I've learned in the course, what is the message, what, anyway, all the subtle parts. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurupyo Namaha Harihi Om